Today's special guest is Brent Hausman. We're so glad to have Brent today. To a little bit about Brent, he is Senior Vice President and Financial Advisor in the Lone Oak Office of Baird Financials. He has over 22 years worth of financial experience. He's a graduate of Union University and finished his MBA at Murray State. And he's involved in many, many activities in our community, including Beyond Uganda, Paducah Chamber of Commerce. He's involved in downtown Kiwanis. In fact, he was Kwanian of the Year and many other activities. We are glad to have Brent with us today. Brent, welcome. And, and Bobby, I appreciate you. Um... For, uh, for having me on here and for inviting me to, uh, to be with you guys today. And I, I appreciate that very much. Um, as, uh, as you said, we are, uh, e even with 22 years of experience, uh, not sure we have a whole lot of experience in, uh, in a time like this. So, uh, we are certainly in unprecedented times and we find ourselves in, um, dealing with situations that are that are different than um, than we've ever faced before, and so uh, trying to figure out what our I, I keep saying around my house what our our new normal is. And um, my my son, my oldest son, graduates this year. He's at McCracken County, and he said, "Dad, I'm not sure I want this to be normal. I'm not sure I want this to be the new normal." And so I certainly understand that. And uh, but we'll we will get by and uh, and figure this out as we go. And so uh, when when Bobby asked me if I would um, would consider doing this, I, I was first uh, honored, of course, to uh, to be able to do it. And then uh, quickly started thinking about what I would share uh, in with a with a group like this to be able to um, to share. Uh, first off, pertinent information, but also information that hasn't um, been readily available or, or out there. And so that kind of becomes the challenge because we, we see, I, I feel like, um, there's so much news out there and whether it's radio, whether it's TV, uh, every time that you turn it on, uh, we hear COVID, we hear Corona, we hear what's next, how do we open up, what's going on. And so, um, today we decided to, to narrow it down really to our field. And, um, and certainly how this might impact you uh, as an individual. And so we'll just go through some of those things. If you have questions, um, be sure and use the chat and, uh, and ask those. And we'll, um, I, I have prepared information uh, to share today, but if there's something that you would rather talk about instead, we'll, uh, we'll certainly do that um, if you would like to. And so uh, it, in addition, I, obviously a lot of people know and are following very closely the direct payments, um, the uh, the stimulus payments, if you will, that are going out there. Some I heard as of last week, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, I guess, folks actually started receiving uh, those stimulus payments. And so um, maybe, maybe even did the happy dance a little bit and would have gone out to celebrate, but um, it's hard to celebrate right now. So uh, hard to know where to go and, and how to celebrate. So. Uh, I guess maybe celebrated at home, but the um, the two trillion dollar CARES Act, and of course Co the CARES Act, CARES stands for Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Security. Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Security. So of course they uh, they made an acronym, and and we're thankful for that. CARES Act is certainly a whole lot easier to say than that. So uh, it was passed by Congress, it seems like so long ago, uh, but it was actually just passed on March the 27th of 2020. And so um, if I look at my watch, today's the 20th. So wow, not um, barely over uh, three weeks ago, three and a half weeks ago, I guess it was passed on a, I think it was passed on a Friday. Uh, and, and of course was intended to bolster the economy that's been ravaged uh, by the effects of COVID-19. And so, like I said, many people know about the direct payments and, and the loans that are being made to individuals and businesses. There are also some other provisions uh, dealing with financial 
uh, your financial and, and your tax planning. So, uh, so we'll talk about some of those first and foremost, and, and it's a good thing because we've already passed that now, but um, Congress did extend the tax filing deadline. Um, that would have been set to, um, the deadline was April the 15th, so it was middle of last week. We're just now past that. Um, and so you have, uh, thankfully, as we said, we have until July the 15th to, uh, to file taxes. Some have gone ahead. I, I spoke with my CPA last week. Uh, I picked up my taxes, I guess, ceremoniously on tax filing deadline. Uh, picked up my taxes and, and I asked the question when I, when I went in to pick them up, how many people have continued on a routine or regular schedule? How many people are postponing? And they felt like they had not done an, an actual or, or scientific report, but they felt like about 75% had, uh, had gone ahead and filed, kind of stayed on the routine, uh, if you will. And, and they kind of made the joke that procrastinators will be procrastinators. So they, they fully expect some to come in later. But uh, so you have until July 15th. If you're expecting a refund, though, go ahead and file as soon as possible if you haven't already. That seems like silly advice as most people that were expecting a refund have probably gone ahead and, uh, and done that. Uh, the Treasury Department will continue to issue refunds as quickly as practically possible and will be doing that uh, kind of simultaneously as they're sending out uh, the stimulus checks. And so um, I don't think I would wanna be working there right now with the, uh, with the workload that they're, that they're under. The reason why we point this out, if you have not filed your taxes, the new deadlines for tax filing uh, also apply to contributions to your traditional IRA, your Roth IRA, your SEP IRA, and your health savings accounts. And so if you've not made uh, your IRA contribution, uh, of course, IRA contributions, you have up until the time that you file your taxes to make your contribution for last year. It's one of the few times that we can actually do something for last year after December 31st to affect our taxes for last year. And so if you have not made those IRA contributions, if you have questions about that, uh, be sure to let me know and I can help walk you through that. Uh, if you have to make estimated tax payments for the 2020 tax year, however, those are still due on the original date or original time um, that you have to do those. So those are due on June 15th, September 15th, and of course, January 15th. So that did not change as part of the, um, as part of the extension or the break that was given there. And so um, there are a, a few other things that we'll, we'll look at here. Uh, of course, the cash payments, uh, for individuals. We're getting some questions about those. I did get a cash payment. My friend, family, neighbor, person I go to church with, they did not get a cash payment. So if you have some questions about those, of course, the, um, the cash payments for individuals were intended uh, to help uh, individuals and to spur the economy on at the same time. And so if you have not, and, and let's talk about that for just a second. If you file your taxes electronically and you get your refund electronically, you should get your, um, your rebate or your, uh, your cash payment, your stimulus money should come to you in that same form. So it should be direct deposited. $1,200 for an individual, $2,400 if you file a joint return, plus $500 per qualifying child. Um, and, and it gets a little bit messy if you have some 17 year olds, 18 year old college students, that type of thing. If you have specific questions there, let me know. Um, but if you, like I said, if you direct deposit your tax return, you'll get your check that way. If you actually get a check in the mail, those checks could be delayed uh, for quite a while. And so just by the sheer number of, um, of checks that have to be processed and mailed out, it they can only send out so many checks per day. So it is going to take some time to get those. Don't uh, don't give up. Um, but if you're expecting that check and you've not gotten it, 
um, via, or you've not gotten your direct deposit rather, and you're expecting that, check with your tax professional, check with your CPA. They might be able to, um, to help you with that. So that's, uh, that's certainly something that, uh, that a lot of people are watching and, and certainly appreciative of. If you are on the broadcast or if you're on the Zoom call today and you are, um, if you're listening and you're over the age of 70 and a half, or as of this year, 72, the CARES Act allows a one-year waiver in the required minimum distribution or what we call in the industry, the RMD. Uh, and so the RMD typically, if you're in past years, that actually changed due to another tax act um, this year that um, you could, um, this year you can delay your RMD. Uh, so you don't have to take that out. And the reason why Congress did not want you to have to, or force you to take a distribution from your IRA, from your qualified plan, your 403A, your 403B, uh, your 401K, your, your 457s, they did not want you to have to take the distribution while the market value was down. And so that could represent a sizable portion or an inequitable portion of your IRA. So it, it will give your IRA a chance to recover this year. Uh, and then of course it goes back. And so it's a waiver. They're not changing that, uh, doing that forever. Uh, it is a one year, um, it, it's a one year uh, thing there. So the other thing on, uh, on retirement plans, if you have to take money out of your retirement plans, Pay attention close here. Some people are, are confusing this. If I, they feel like if I just want to go in and take money out of my retirement plan, I can do it. it. That's not exactly what the CARES Act says. It waives the 10% penalty on early distributions. Of course, an early distribution is designed or somebody under the age of 59 and a half. Typically, if you're under 59 and a half, you take money out of your qualified retirement plan or your IRA, you would be subject to a 10% penalty. This will allow if, if, and that's the big, that's the big catch there. If they're coronavirus related expenses or purposes, then it will waive the 10% penalty up to a maximum of a hundred thousand dollars. And so it, it applies not only if you, but, but also your spouse or dependent is diagnosed uh, with, with COVID-19 or coronavirus, but also if you experience financial difficulties as a result of this. So uh, it, it may mean that you're being quarantined, you're furloughed, you're laid off, uh, simply your work hours reduced. Maybe I wasn't laid off, but I'm no longer full time. Uh, being able to, to work, if you can't work because you have to uh, maybe care for a child or um, you know, your business is temporarily closed or your hours there are, are, are curtailed. Um, so if you have, um, if you fall into any of those and you have to take money out of your qualified plan, that 10% penalty is going to be waived. So that's an added bonus. So um, Congress did not want to restrict you from, uh, from access to your retirement account. We save in those retirement accounts for, for a rainy day. And certainly some could argue that, um, that it's kind of a rainy day or rainy season that we're in uh, right now. And so, um, so that certainly helps. Um, looking on down our list here, um, the... Um, let me see, the qualified plan loans, uh, the, the amount that you can borrow from your, from your retirement plan is temporarily increased, as we said a minute ago. Um, it typically is, is $50,000 is the max that you can borrow uh, from your qualified plan. It's now $100,000 or 100% 100 of your vested account balance, whichever is less, of course. Uh, and this is in effect for only 180 days, starting March 27th, the day that it was passed. 
Um, and, uh, and, and so here, here's the one thing that I would tell you though. And, and I've had somebody, I did have one person call and say, Hey, while I have the opportunity, I'd like to borrow from my 401k or my qualified plan. My recommendation, my advice to you is if we don't need that money or we don't have to have that money, let's don't take it. Leave the money in the account and let it continue, let it recover, let it grow and, and let the money come back. So if we don't need uh, the money, don't take it. We typically recommend that clients look at their retirement accounts really as the last resort, as the last place to pull money from. So, um, so we'd rather see you not take it from there, even though it is available. So Congress did us a favor, but hopefully we won't have to do that. Uh, let's talk about charity uh, for a minute, charitable deductions. Um, even if you don't itemize your deductions, you can take an above the line deduction up to $300 for charitable cash contributions made to a 501c3 organization on your 2020 tax return. So if you itemize your deductions on your return, also the adjusted gross income limitation um, it is suspended. So it, let, it really effectively lets you deduct as much as 100% of your 2020 adjusted gross income for things that went to um, a charitable contribution or charitable deduction. So the Congress is really trying to encourage the private uh, sector, individuals, me, you, your friends, your neighbors, to help folks and to, um, to help encourage us to give to charities. There's so many things, so many things right now going on and so many different charities that are raising money. Um, just right here in Paducah, as Bobby said, I'm a member of Kiwanis and, and near and dear to my heart. Just this past week, our uh, Kiwanis Zoom meeting, uh, we had uh, Candace Malloy from Family Service Society. She was on there, she was sharing about uh, some of the things the Kiwanis are giving meals uh, for them to distribute to their folks. But then also um, she talked about a couple different programs that they have. She talked about their food pantry being, uh, being low, of course. Um, the schools are delivering meals to students, but outside of that, there are families that are struggling. Um, maybe it's a waiter, waitress, you know, somebody's hours being cut, whatever. Um, and so many charitable organizations in town. The, um, the United Way has their, um, obviously as their programs, they're there to help. And now is the time. Uh, the Chamber just launched a video on Friday and, and that's kind of the campaign. We're all in this together. And it truly is. And, and um, part of the rewarding experience of living in a small town is to see what others are doing for each other and to see how people are helping. So again, if you have questions, call me. My, my office number 270-450-9900, Hey, I, I, I feel like I can help right now. I have a little bit of extra money. Where, where should I go? Maybe I can help route you um, in, in those directions. So Kiwanis are, are doing a lot of things that the city has a, uh, has a small business grant out route right now. They're accepting donations as part of their matching program. Of course, Bobby mentioned Beyond Uganda. Um, I, I could talk an entire Zoom call on what, um, on what uh, Beyond Uganda is doing right now. And so um, this is not just a Paducah thing or Kentucky thing or US thing. It is, uh, it, it's obviously an international thing that we're dealing with. So the charitable thing is, uh, is pretty cool. A lot of times, uh, Kristen, I just saw your comment there. A lot of times that is an overlooked uh, thing right now. And so uh, several things for, for businesses, and, and we won't get real technical in here, but uh, deducting business losses. Um, the, the CARES Act allows you to once again use business losses to claim refunds on your returns it's suspended some of the provisions in the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act of 2017 that did away with those. So those are now back. Um, so excess business loss limitations and the limitation on offsetting business losses against non-business income are retroactively suspended for the years to 2018 through 2020. 
So that's pretty cool. If you have a, um, if you had a loss producing business or investments in those, those years, you may want to consider amending your 2018 and your 2019 uh, tax returns. Folks, I don't, uh, I don't give tax advice. I'm not a CPA. I don't do my own taxes. I do strongly recommend um, if you, especially if you're operating your own business, talk to a CPA, talk to a, to a tax advisor. Hey, do I need to go back and, uh, and look at this uh, right now? And so that's one thing that, that came out. Um, of, of course, um, I, I do feel partial a little bit uh, as a small business owner and operator myself. Uh, my heart goes out to small businesses and, and it's hard. You know, that decision to lay employees off is a, um, is a decision that kept a lot of small business owners up uh, many hours at night. And, you know, you, you become like family in a small business and, and you certainly don't want to do that if, um, if you don't have to. And so the uh, payroll protection program, the PPP, uh, something that was put out by the small business uh, administration as of Thursday afternoon, uh, that program was out of money. Uh, according to the U S chamber of commerce this morning, they do expect more money to be put in that program, uh, in the near future. And so if you are a business owner, you did not file for the payroll protection program. You may get another chance. Talk to your banker, talk to your CPA. I know, um, from talking to one business owner, um, the, the financial institution that he was working with did not, was not able to process that for him. So if not find out where you can go, uh, to be able to take advantage of that. I, my suspicion is that if more money is passed by Congress to, uh, to be able to do that, that money too will go fast. Uh, and so you need to be ready when that money is available. Um, and so that that pretty well um, pretty well touches on the um, the prepared comments I had today. Uh, one question that um, that I did see come in, you know, how do I know when to invest? How do I know what to do? Um, the we are not we being uh, the folks at our office, the folks at Baird we are not trying to time the market. We're not trying to say, yes, this is the, this is the absolute best time to buy. What, what we are focusing on rather is good companies to buy. And so we, we encourage you to, to look at the big picture, to look long-term. You're either an optimist or a pessimist. You're either a helper or a complainer. You're a bull or a bear. And, and we feel like in extraordinary circumstances, it's important to find who you are so you can get to work. And so are you a big picture? Or are you a, a short term? That's the kind of first things that we have to look at there. Uh, of course, um, I, I'm an optimist. Um, I, I do look long term. I do think long term. Is this easy for me? No, it's not. Is it easy for my family? No, it's not. There's uh, with, with four kids and a dog and, uh, you know, all the distractions going on. It's a challenge. It's a challenge to work. Uh, you'll notice it's very quiet. I'm not working from home today. I'm working from somewhere else. Uh, so I do get some quiet. And so figure out what your new normal is and try to do the, uh, try to do the best that you can. Try to look long term. Just because we have to socially distance, that is a, that doesn't have to be a, you know, it doesn't mean social isolation, it doesn't mean cut yourself off and not be in contact with others. Reach out to folks, whether it's by phone, whether it's by Zoom, whether it's by FaceTime, reach out and stay connected uh, the best you can. So Bobby, that, that, uh, that completely, Completes my prepared comments there. We have, uh, looks like we have quite a bit more time available. So if you have questions, uh, be sure to put that, you can uh, send those to Leslie or put them out there in the chat and we'll, uh, we'll address some of those. 
Does anyone else have any questions for Brent while he's here today? We are going to stick around after the questions for just a few moments. If you would like to, anyone like to, uh, to comment or touch base with Brent, he will be here for just a few more moments. I do want to remind you about the next McLib Live that's coming up. Our guest will be, it's April 29th at one o'clock, and our guest will be Catherine Fuller with Kentucky Legal Aid. And she's always good to have, she's a wealth of information. Any more questions for Brent? I appreciate so much, Brent, your presentation, your time today, and all the good ideas and input that you've given us today. Absolutely, thank you, Bobby, for, uh, for having us on there. And I, I will throw out there one thing, a question that we, um, just a couple of questions that we get a lot um, at the office. Uh, certainly, first and foremost is, is what do I do? You know, what uh, should I be doing anything right now? Uh, I don't want to miss an opportunity, whatever. And, and I, I think the first thing that we recommend to folks is focus on what you, what you can control. Uh, that first and foremost, my family's safety, uh, staying at home when we can. I, um, I have to, uh, I have to admit, I am not a, a homebody, as they say, I'm not a home person. I'm a go, 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 go all the time. And so I have found myself at home more in the last month or five weeks now than, than ever before. We've cooked more meals at home than we ever have. We've played more games, done more puzzles, done whatever. Um, but that is something that I can control. And so we feel like at, at the Hausman Group and at Baird, we first have to get through the virus stage, okay, the containment stage. And right now our numbers are, are still going, statewide are still going up. The, uh, the governor released on Friday, uh, President Trump released on Thursday or Friday, the, the three different levels are, are things that have to be met to be able, that's what people are, are asking now, what, what has to happen to be able to get back to work? What has to, to happen to be able to get the economy going back? Um, containment is first. So whether we like it or not, whether I agree with it or not, whether I wanna be home or not, uh, staying home, keeping my family home, isolating, separating, keeping everybody healthy uh, is first and foremost. As soon as we get past that, uh, then we can get some things open back up. And so uh, what I do to support my teammates, um, my, the other folks in my, in my office, um, and, and our clients, that's, uh, we can control that. So like I said, be on the phone, call somebody. I, I've tried to make uh, routine calls and texts to my friends from Kiwanis. Uh, I sent five or six messages to folks in my leadership Paducah class yesterday, just checking on folks, just a sense of family and community. Um, and so we can control that. And I, I try to ask every person that I, I check out with at a drive through or at Lowe's or, or wherever, hey, are you guys doing okay? How are you doing? Or we're gonna make it, you know, try to encourage each other. And so those are, are certainly important things. Um, we can, again, Bobby, this may be, may be hard sometimes, but we can control our attitude. And, um, you know, our attitude on social media. It, it does no good for me to, to get on social media and blast whoever. Man, I disagree with this. It's dumb. It's whatever. I can't change that. I can't change them. I can't control them, but I can control my attitude. And I, I think pessimism feeds pessimism a lot of times. Optimism can feed optimism. And so try to post Try to make a happy post. Try to post about your family, about what you're doing, about, hey, it's going to be sunny and 70 today. Let's, uh, let's, look, to those, uh, let's look to those small things and, and try to help control our attitude. Uh, I, I touched on, again, staying in touch with people uh, that, we, that we care about, keeping my spirits up. Those are things that we can, um, that we can control. And then once that we um, once we kind of get through those, then um, then we will and we can start to see our our economies open back up. I'm a firm believer in our in our local economy, buying local, uh, supporting the local restaurants, supporting the local establishments, 
the local stores here. I, I know Mother's Day is coming up. Hey, we, we probably can't take mom out to lunch. Doesn't look like restaurants are going to be open up. You know what? But I can send her flowers. And you know what? I can do that at a, uh, at a local flower shop. And so think local, local businesses, um, we need them to be around certainly after, uh, after all this is over, but also right now they need us. Um, and so they really are, I truly believe small business is the heartbeat of America. Of course, the big companies help us as well. And they do a lot of things that, that we can't do small business, uh, local certainly helps. And so, um, laughter, last thing I'll leave you with, uh, laughter is a huge part of life. And it means, uh, it means a whole lot to me, uh, even in finance. And so find someone who makes you smile and, uh, and hold on to them with both hands. So human beings can only take so much serious investment commentary. And I, I would caution you to, um, to think about that. I try to balance markets with a sense of humor and, um, and, and not to get too bogged down. The average news cycle, again, our, our Kiwana Zoom meeting a, a, few, uh, a few weeks ago, we, we had somebody on there and, and she was talking about just cautioning us about getting down and about letting news bring us down. The average news cycle lasts about 30 minutes. And so if you're on whatever network TV news all day long, it's just going to continue to bring you down and it can affect your, your psyche, uh, if you will. And so try not to let it do that. If you need to turn it on to hear some news, that's great, but then move on. And so, uh, so try not to, um, to let that get you bogged down there. So the, um, the technicals, of the markets can certainly bring you down. It's hard to understand. If you watch very long, you'll even see different, different opinions. The, uh, the technical analysts don't always agree. So certainly if, uh, if it's not what you do every day, it can be frustrating and, and hard to follow. So. Anything else, Bobby? I think it's a great, it makes you appreciate all the things. I think that helps. We talked about sunshine and being outdoors today. I think that's wise words. Cullen, Scott, any fellow Kiwanians have anything they want to weigh in? Bobby, just while they're thinking or unmuting, I, I do want to thank you guys as the, uh, as the public library, the McCracken County Public Library, for putting these on, for, for doing your part to, uh, to get information out there and um, the, the library when I grew up was somewhere you just went to get a book. The McCracken County Public Library is so much more than that. Uh, and, and I thank you for, for taking, your, taking your role seriously and, and, and as I said, reaching out to us to, to share and to, to make this information available to folks. And so we, um, sometimes we don't appreciate or value uh, things until we, uh, until we find ourselves in a situation like this. So. Thank you all, your whole team, for, uh, for doing what you do. We appreciate you. Let's take a look at our Facebook and our website. We are offering book discussions. We have all kinds of different events coming up. Uh, story time is now virtual. There are fit lit walks, just all kinds of great things. And we are still here. We're still your library. We're ready to serve you and take a look. We've got some really good things coming up. Thank Absolutely. you all so much for being here today. We are going to stick around for just five or 10 minutes. If you would like to touch base or add a comment or something, we will be around and we hope to see you at the next McLeod event, which will be coming up April 29th with Catherine Fuller. Thank you so much, Brent. Thank you, Bobby.